Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Senator Ken Haar, and I represent Legislative District 21 in the Nebraska Legislature. I'm on the Nebraska's uh, Resources Committee, and the first advice I got was this. Always remember, whiskey is for drinking and water is for fighting, and we are in a fight for our water. TransCanada is in a fight for more profit. It's the water we drink, it's the water that enables our agricultural economy, it's the water that is more valuable than oil. And I'd like to talk about national interest today, but, but also about Nebraska interest. And I think Americans today assume that when you talk about national interest, it's not coming from the top down, from Washington or Ottawa, but that's upside down because the Keystone XL pipeline is, going, is planned to go through Nebraska. National interest starts with Nebraskans. And with all due respect to this committee, I would say today the majority of Nebraskans feel like natural, uh, national interest is being defined by the federal government and TransCanada and that you don't give a damn about Nebraska. What I'm asking is that you move the pipeline away from the sand hills and the aquifer. Despite the slick, feel-good commercials from TransCanada, the majority of Nebraskans clearly agree with those who booed the TransCanada commercial at the first two Cornhusker football games. And the majority of Nebraskans agree with Sen U.S. Senator Mike Johans, U.S. Senator Ben Nelson, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry, and Governor Heineman, who all have asked that the pipeline be rerouted around the Sand Hills and the Ogallala Aquifer. Yeah. And, and here's, here's part of our concern, you see, and this comes directly from the supplemental draft EIS. The, the going th through the current proposed pipeline corridor for 65 miles, and this is from your report, going through approximately 65 miles, the groundwater depth is 10 feet or less from the surface. In the sand hills, there are lakes that appear at times in the year. They're called wet meadows, and they're all over the place. Less than 10 feet from the surface. You drill in places, uh, in many places in the sand hills, if you put a post hole in the ground, you strike water. So, and I may be a skeptic, but I find big holes in the final EIS. And I'm going to name a few of those today. The fact that the State Department at TransCanada used the same independent environmental consultant, Cardinal Entrex. Quoting from... Quoting from the Entrex website, quote, Keystone contracted with Cardinal Entrex as the third party contractor to assist DOS in preparing the EIS. Sounds like, well, sort of like the fox hired his independent contractor to guard the hen house. I frankly think it, it raises real questions of integrity with the FEIS. And then you ignore Nebraska scientists. You put one in front that says there's no problem. You ignore Dr. John Gates and Wayne Wold who have said there's insufficient scientific research for us to accurately predict how leaking oil would behave in the water-saturated sand hills. And these are UNL water scientists who conduct research on water flow and contamination. And then there's Dr. John Stansberry from UNL, who's a water and risk assessment expert, has concluded that the risk of catastrophic, catastrophic pipeline failure is far greater than TransCanada's estimate. And by the way, in the FEIS, his conclusion is dismissed by three TransCanada staff members. So why can't national interest and Nebraska interest work hand in hand? And how can that happen if Nebraska is not at the table? We need more time. And that's, you know, if what I'm asking today is we need more time 
for your decision. Why? Well, for one thing, it's only in the recent past that ne Nebraskans and Americans have become aware of the meaning of catastrophic and worst case scenario. Uh, British Petroleum in the Gulf, uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in Japan, the major oil spill, a million gallons of oil spilling into the Kalamazoo River, 42,000 gallons spilling into the Yellowstone River. There is a reason for concern. We have to be concerned about risk. It's not simply a philosophical discussion. So since my time is running short, I would say Please delay your decision. Please delay your decision. And if not, please, we will continue. May I just ask everyone to respect each other? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll finish up right now. If more time is out of the question, then reject the pipeline altogether. But we're not giving up. We'll continue to fight for our precious water. Thank you very much. Thank you.